All right, hello guys, and welcome to our weekly forecast from October 27th until November 3rd. We're going to go over our precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and our special notes segment. The temperature forecast is actually very, very interesting this week. We're going to have a lot of cold moving in. We'll be talking about that later on. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, let's get right into things. So we're going to take a look at last week's temperature forecast here and then compare it to what actually happened. We do this review at the beginning of each one. Also throughout this video, I changed the timing of the advertisements. A lot of people were complaining that they were too close together. So I am going to spread them out a little bit here just to make it a little bit more viewable. But I do want to mention that people have been complaining about the amount of ads and I still come from the side of, well, you're getting probably about 10% of the advertisements that you'd be seeing on TV or anything like that. So you're still, you know, I put as many ads as I need to be able to, to continue to do this daily. Uh, and you're going to be seeing less ads than you would on the Weather Channel or your local TV stations. Okay, now let's get into it. Uh, you can see I was calling for below average temperatures in the Northwest and the North Central United States. And mostly the very Southern United States was receiving warmer than normal temperatures as well as the Northeast. Let's take a look at what actually happened. Here And you can see the east was a little bit warmer than what I was calling for, and maybe it wasn't quite warm, obviously, in the south-central United States. I feel like it was actually cold there for Texas and uh, New Mexico. We had that low-pressure system bring in some cold. Really, really hard to predict those types of situations, but California, the forecast was spot on. Let me know what you thought about that. Leave, leave comments down below and let me know how I did on that weekly forecast. Now, let's get into this week's weekly forecast. So we're going to be starting with our precipitation forecast. Let's add our first layer. So this is our slightly above average precipitation layer. You can see out there in Colorado and Denver, as well as some areas in Kansas, Nebraska, and southern Wyoming, we have a little bit of above average precipitation. We're going to have multiple storms be moving in. So be on the lookout for that throughout the week, at least two towards the beginning from what I can see. Then we're also going to have some slightly above average precipitation, basically from Dallas and San Antonio eastward uh, with the exception of southern Florida as well as some areas in the mid-Atlantic like coastal North Carolina and coastal Virginia as well. Those regions will be about average uh, but besides that basically a lot of the east is going to be above average precipitation. Now let's add our second layer of green here and you can see the south central United States or the deep south there you can see has uh, some of that moderate green indicating our moderately above average precipitation region as well as coastal New England getting in on some of that as well. We're going to have a couple of potential coastal systems interacting with the New England states. So that's going to lead to some precipitation again as well as the deep south as we're going to have a lot of systems coming up from the Gulf and moving in there. Probably a lot of precipitation coming up as well. Let's get started with our below average precipitation regions. We have three of them here. So let's start out with that one there for New Mexico and Texas. Not a lot to be talked about there. Just a little bit below average as far as precipitation is concerned as well. Same story for the Dakotas and northern Minnesota there. Not a lot of precipitation. The storms look to move around that region. So they won't be getting too much precipitation this week. Not that you guys need it because obviously with our... Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had our blizzards there, and that led to a lot of precipitation for those regions. So they're probably thankful that they're not getting too much precipitation here. Uh, as well as the West Coast there, you can see the Pacific Northwest particularly, but as well as California and northern Nevada, we have uh, some slightly below average precipitation going on. It's going to be quite dry out there. Let's go ahead and add our second layer of tan or brown here, and you can see coastal northwest there as well as some of the northern Rockies are going to be dealing with moderately below average precipitation as well as some of northern California there as well. These areas are going to be more dry than that tan area and it's probably going to be quite noticeable for these regions. And we even have our third layer of brown here for the Pacific Northwest. Our jet stream is going to move to the north of you and lead towards most of that precipitation heading into Canada instead of you guys. So for this week we're going to be dealing with quite dry conditions but it seems like the last few weeks we've been dealing with quite a bit of precipitation for these regions so it's probably a well needed break from the precipitation for you guys now let's get started with our temperature forecast i'm ready to add our first layer here and you can see this is our first layer of above average temperatures the southeast and mid-atlantic states look to get be the only area with above average temperatures here 
uh, from Florida up through southern New England. We're going to be dealing with a little bit of warm conditions, but it's going to feel pretty much average for these regions most of the time. For our second layer of orange here, you can see that really just covers the really the southeast coastal region. So coastal North Carolina, coastal South Carolina, coastal Georgia, and regions in central Florida. All these regions, it'll be a pretty noticeable that it's a little bit warm, but nothing too crazy. It's, you know, we're heading into November. So even when you're in above average temperatures, it's not going to be hot or anything. So most likely uh, it's just going to be quite warm for these regions. Now, for our below average temperatures, as I mentioned before, uh, it's going to cover a large area here from the Pacific Northwest and regions in central California all the way through to a lot of the Great Lakes states and Gulf states. So we have a wide area of slightly below average temperatures here. Uh, let's add our second layer of blue, though, and this is where it starts to get noticeable that it was a chilly week. Remember that. Keep that in mind. This covers a big area too, from inland areas of Washington and Oregon, most of Nevada, and then the northern uh, four corner states there, as well as northern Texas, all the way up through the north central United States. This is covering all the Rockies and some of those western regions of the Great Lakes states. So it's going to be quite cold for all of these regions, quite noticeable as well. And this covers a lot of big cities like Dallas, Denver, Salt Lake City, uh, just to name a few, Minneapolis, Chicago, Kansas City, uh, St. Louis. So a lot of giant cities here are getting in on some of this very, very cold temperatures. So all of these regions are going to be dealing with below average temperatures. And again, quite noticeable below average temperatures. But we even have a third shade of blue. And this is where it's going to be extremely uh, below average, very, very far below average. For this week, it's going to, I expect it to be quite cold for these dark blue regions. Uh, basically, from some of the main major cities in Montana, so some of those northern Rocky regions or just to the east of the northern Rockies, down through all of Wyoming, all of eastern Colorado, northern Texas, a lot of the western regions of Oklahoma, all of Kansas, Kansas City, and a lot of those regions in Missouri and a lot of Nebraska and South Dakota being covered by this as well. So big cities like Denver, Kansas City, Oklahoma City, uh, just to name a couple, are going to be in on a lot of these very far below average temperatures. Uh, so be expecting it to be quite chilly and you know feel a lot like maybe even late November or December this week as we're going to be dealing with 10 degrees or more below average on a seven-day period, which means pretty consistent cold and very cold at that. Now let's get into your special note segment of the video. We only have two here, but I'm going to show two options for the second one. And these are for my winter storm videos. I'm going to save you the trouble. If you haven't seen those videos, I'm going to be going over basically the, the gist of those to kind of save you from that. I was thinking the special note videos, why don't I just use some of these forecasts that I made? Because I think that now that I'm making these really nice looking layers for those videos, it kind of fits. So here's for our first one from the 25th, which is two days ago through the 30th. So this one's already starting for the Rockies there, but the Great Lakes, we're going to be dealing with some potential, you know, seeing snow showers to maybe an inch plus in some regions there for Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa. So there is going to be some sort of winter storm going on for this purple region. The more Southern regions obviously are going to be more rainy than anything, uh, but the more Northern regions potentially dealing with snow, obviously, and these are a lot of the regions that we have those below average temperatures moving in. That's going to lead to potentially a snowstorm there. Now, our second snowstorm is going to be our Halloween snowstorm, which is going to extend from the 29th through the 2nd of November. So we can see there's two options for this one. I'm going to show you both. Option number one is a stronger low pressure system located over the northern Rockies there that kind of curves down in through the southern Rockies and then back up through the Great Lakes leading to a potential major snowstorm for some of those pink regions. And then our weaker low over Texas is going to move into the southeast and then into New England leading to no connection between the two jets and mostly just warm with only rain for a lot of those green regions. Now, option number two is a little more interesting. We have a weaker low up there in the Rockies and a stronger low over Texas and these make a connection over the mid-Atlantic and then lead to some snow, mostly rain for the coastal New England, but coastal New England states, but some snow for the inland northeast. And then in the pink regions, it's going to be a less major snowstorm, but potentially snow throughout those pink regions. And then for the green regions, warm with only rain still. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. No viewer sent in uh, photos on this one. We haven't gotten enough 
this week. But if you do tag us in this photos on Instagram and we do get enough, we will still be continuing to do those. But we didn't get enough uh, tags in those photos. So unfortunately, we had to take a week off from those because we didn't get enough sent in. So continue to send those in if you want to see us do those sent in photos. Be sure to share this with your friends and family on social media and all sorts of other things if you think they'll find it useful or interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.